Good morning. I'm Tangam Venkatesan, and I'm professor of medicine in the Division of Gastroenterology, Hepatology, and Nutrition at the Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio. I'm really excited today to be here to share some pearls about management and diagnosis of cyclic vomiting syndrome. And I'm joined here today by my colleague, David Leventhal, who will introduce himself. Yeah, welcome everyone. Um, I'm David Leventhal. I'm very happy to join with Angam um, to uh, speak about cyclic vomiting syndrome. I'm a uh, uh, assistant professor at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. I, I direct the Neurogastroenterology and Motility Center, and I've been very interested in CVS uh, for quite some time. So, uh, Thangum, I, I, I want you to share with uh, our audience, uh, how, how do we diagnose cyclic vomiting syndrome? Yeah, so um, that's a great question, David, and uh, it might sound very simple, but um, I really think it's something that clinicians should be aware of. Now, as you know, CVS, cyclic vomiting syndrome, is a disorder of gut-brain interaction, and we don't have any blood tests or biomarkers or x-ray tests to really diagnose this disease. And so really the cornerstone of diagnosis rests on what we call Rome criteria, as you know. Mm -hmm. And so essentially the Rome criteria states that you need to have at least three episodes. They typically tend to be stereotypical and uh, they should occur over the past year. And they are typically separated either by intervals when the patient is feeling completely fine or they do have some baseline symptoms. And so I think what is really important for physicians to understand is to elicit a history and go back in time to find out what is happening to the patient. And so that's very, uh, really important in diagnosing CVS. Um, so David, moving on to management, can you tell the audience a little bit about whom we should be offering prophylactic treatment to, and also a few tips about how to use rescue therapy or abortive treatment? Sure. Great question. So prophylactic therapy should be reserved for the treatment of patients that have more moderate to severe forms of illness with frequent attacks, longer attacks, those that lead to the ER visits. But all patients should have access to rescue or abortive therapy. The timing of taking those medications, those abortive treatments, is critical. Um, having those treatments delivered as early as a patient can recognize that a, uh, an attack is coming is really associated with more efficacious outcomes. So timing matters the most. That's great. And like David says, you need to do it as early in the prodrome as possible to try and really prevent the progression to an episode is what David is trying to say. And um, again, I'd like to thank everybody for having us. And I hope uh, we're really excited to have the CPU update. And I hope it will help clinicians all over uh, to really better diagnose and manage CBS. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.